welcome back to Man Cave Collectibles. Coming at you today with another figure review. So today we want to take a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Snake Eyes. Uh, so this is a figure I've really been anticipating, really been waiting on. I've seen a few reviews um, already out there. Uh, I think he's starting to hit shelves and, uh, you know, show up at online retailers. So we got him in today, so I want to go ahead and do a review for you guys. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the packaging. Uh, this is some of my favorite packaging from Hasbro so far. Um, I really just like the design uh, of the window. I think it's really cool how they did the design along with the box art. I uh, got that, you know, iconic G.I. Joe, um, you know, verbiage and, and logo there. Uh, Snake Eyes written down here, pretty small on the bottom. Um, up top, we've got an O2 there and the G.I. Joe star. Flipping on around, we got some really cool artwork here uh, of Snake Eyes. And then a really nice uh, bit of artwork there on the back of the packaging. I really like that. Uh, instead of going with, uh, you know, your traditional kind of product image like we typically see them do, um, they actually gave us some really nice uh, artwork that I'm assuming was probably made specifically for this box. Um, and we've got, you know, some other figures that have already been announced uh, for uh, either Wave 1 or Wave 2. So really, really cool. Uh, like I said, probably uh, my favorite box uh, from Hasbro uh, amongst all the lines of Marvel Legends, uh, you know, the Power Rangers Lightning series. This is probably my favorite. So let's go ahead and get this guy out of the packaging. I'm really excited to do that. Let's get him out. Let's see what we got. Here we go, guys. We got him out of his packaging, and uh, I am impressed. Um, I really am. Uh, took a few minutes to kind of toy around with this guy, and uh, we'll take a look at his articulation and some of the design with him. Uh, but first thing I want to do, uh, we always go ahead and cover the accessories first. So let's talk about what comes with him. So the first thing we'll talk about is his backpack. Uh, looks pretty good. Got a little bit of paint on it, a little silver paint. It's mostly just molded black uh, plastic, uh, but it does have uh, some bits of silver there, which I think look really good. To be such small paint work, they did a, did a good job, stayed within the lines. Uh, you do see here that we have a um, hole here that we'll talk about uh, here in just a little bit. And we also have uh, a peg here that uh, we'll be able to secure this into his back, which we'll also cover uh, here in a little bit. Next up, probably my second favorite accessory here is we do have his sword and sheath. So we have the sword here. Now, uh, the sword has no paint, which um, I like paint. You know, I, I want paint on these figures. Um, lucky enough, we do have a little bit of paint on the sheath there at the top. You can see the little bit of red there on both sides. Uh, and it also has a peg here. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, the sword here just fits uh, well enough right down into the sheath. The sheath does have kind of a, uh, almost like a leather look to it, the way they, they sculpted and molded the uh, sheath itself. So it looks really nice. Um, again, I, I just wish we'd had a little paint on the sword itself, just somewhere. Uh, it's a little more, something a little more than just the black molded plastic, but again, it does look good. Next up, we have, um, I guess, kind of one of his smaller, um, like almost like a submachine gun maybe of sorts here. Uh, looks good. Has a hole in it here, which is kind of odd looking. Um, not sure I really follow that and, and the purpose of that other than, you know, is it supposed to uh, somehow fit this peg through and then that peg fit into maybe the backpack? I, I don't know. It's kind of odd to me, um, but I don't mind it. This has no paint on it either. It is just uh, sculpted uh, black plastic, uh, but it looks well enough. I'm, I'm happy with that. Then he's got a smaller pistol or handgun here. Um, again, no paint here. Uh, it does come with a suppression uh, canister here, which will fit on the end just like so. I think it actually looks better uh, like that. And it also has kind of this odd uh, hole in it. Uh, again, I guess maybe to secure it in some way. Uh, you know, for me personally, I'm, I'm, you know, we're gonna secure it in his, uh, you know, 
his gun holster there, but um, I guess if you have the suppressor on it, uh, it's not going to be able to uh, do that. And uh, I don't know if you can't really see the down the barrel of the suppressor, but it is not hollow. It is just a solid piece of plastic with just a slight cut out at the end of the barrel. Um, looks good though. And then we just have, uh, you know, kind of his little small kind of hunting knife or, you know, to me it's more like a, you know, a Rambo knife uh, is what I would call this kind of as I was growing up. But it uh, looks good. Again, no paint here, um, just black molded plastic. But it looks good and it also has a sheath on his leg for it. So get that out of the way and we will take a look at Snake Eyes here. So uh, this guy looks fantastic. I'm really excited about getting him on my shelf. I don't think I'm going to go with the whole G.I. Joe line. Uh, when I was growing up, um, I did have some of the, you know, three and three quarter inch G.I. Joes, uh, but I, I didn't, I, I don't know if maybe that fell a tad before me um, as far as my time. So I, I kind of missed out on just all the G.I. Joe hype. Um, but Snake Eyes was one of the 3.75 inch figures that I had, and it was just one of my favorite. Uh, I thought that that was such a cool character being a ninja. You know, as a kid, that always seems cool. So it feels really good to get this in six inch form. Uh, so let's take a look at him, um, you know, up around his head. You know, one thing about this guy, very little paint on him at all. Uh, it's just a lot of sculpted and molded plastic. The pretty much the paint that he has, uh, you can pretty much see every bit of it right here, uh, pretty much from his waist to his upper thigh. It's pretty much all the paint on him. Uh, we do have a, a little accent piece here right above uh, his visor uh, in red, uh, but they did do his belt buckles in silver, which is nice. These are kind of free floating, free moving, so you're able to kind of move them around uh, to your to your choosing as well as the belt here. This can, uh, it's kind of free floating. It's not, it's not held in place or, or glued in place. So you can kind of move it around, which helps with the articulation as well. And then the last thing here, he does have kind of this bandolier, or, uh, I guess you would call it, where he's got three grenades on it and then a pouch here. Um, that does not, I don't think it's intended to come off. Um, you probably could maneuver it off if you maybe popped his head off you could probably maneuver that over the over the neck and uh, and off the side of the body if you didn't want that to be there. Um, but looking at the head, uh, lots of good detail as far as the sculpting there. You can see that I I'm really happy with that. They've got kind of some different types of plastic. They kind of have a a matte color here, kind of across the top of the head, and then on the sides they have kind of more of a shiny uh, color there. So that, that really offsets each, each other very well. As we move down the, uh, you know, down the suit, you can see like, you know, they tried to mold this in a way that almost has a leather look to it, right in this area here. Uh, we do have a little bit of paint there. It was covered by his mandolier, but you do see that logo there that we see in different places, the belt on the backpack and the, uh, I'm not on the backpack, on the sheath. They did a good job here as far as like the armor. You can see where the armor definitely has more of a shiny color to it as compared to, you know, like his straps and things kind of, again, have that almost like a leather uh, type of, of look to them. Just looks really nice. I'm liking this guy. They did a good job here with the pants. Actually, they actually have um, not almost like a jean texture. I uh, know it's not jeans that he's wearing, but uh, it kind of has a, you know, a texture almost like a jean would. Real good. And then again, as we get down to the knees here, you can see it's back to that kind of shiny armor. Same thing for his knife, knife sheath uh, and for his, uh, for his gun holder there also. And, and I actually just noticed there's actually a place here, you see that, that's actually a, a location for his suppressor. So you can holster the gun as well as ha you have a uh, place to place a suppressor as well. That, wow, that's that, that's attention to detail, Hasbro. Good job there, I'm liking that. Uh, and then we get on down to the boots and you've just got kind of a shiny, um, you know, kind of armored look to his boots. As far as articulation, uh, let's run through that real fast. So we've got, 
uh, in the head. You've got about that much up, a lot down, and then you've got full 360 there, full 360 in the arms, double jointed elbows. Here's one thing I do wanna talk about as far as the wrist articulation. So they did something different here. Um, I'm not gonna say that I dislike it or that I like it yet. Um, if I could get this peg out maybe, hopefully I don't tear something up, but you know, typically a legend would have a peg here that would go where this uh, wrist would hinge up and down. Well, there's no up and down here on this, on this. I know it's hard to see because it's all black. It's all side to side. So you can see the, the, how the hand is placed right now. It only goes side to side. No up and down. So that's new. That is something new. Um, you know, Marvel Legends, they, they don't do it that way. So if you have this hand out here like this, you cannot hinge it up or down. You can only... You can only go with that side to side motion. So just something different as far as articulation there. Again, I'm not gonna say that I like it or dislike it yet. Get the legs out to here, full split action, forward and back, double joint in the knee, full 360 in the calf, lots of side to side, and the ankle, and forward, and down. And one thing I did forget up here, we do have full 360 in the bicep. So the articulation on this guy is fantastic. Um, it is as good as a Marvel Legend, maybe even better uh, because of these hip, the hip areas. Um, and, uh, you know, actually, I, I think I did uh, forget to cover uh, even the chest articulation. I'm so excited to have this guy. I'm, I'm rushing uh, through the articulation because I want to get back to these accessories and putting them on him. Uh, but he does have really nice ab crunch here as well. <laughs> the, the, the crunch backward is uh, not only phenomenal, but completely unrealistic. Uh, but it's, it's there. Uh, you can, you can really, you're going to really be able to pose this guy any, any way you want to pose him. Um, so I like that about him. So we'll bring in some of the accessories. So we can see we got his backpack here. There's a hole, there's a peg hole right in his back. There's also a peg hole in his bandolier. So you would line those two up and just pop that backpack through. So that, that would also help hold that bandolier in place. Now, something we'll have to see is with the backpack on, you know, does that, uh, hinder his ability to stand. It doesn't appear so. Um, this guy, like I said, he's so articulated that you're going to be able to pose him in any way you want to pose him. Uh, and even the, the extra weight of just this solid piece of plastic on his back, you can see is really not affecting him that much. So that looks really good. So we'll talk about the pistol here. So the pistol suppressor, we can see just fits right there. And that, and then the pistol will fit right there. So that looks really good. Now, I, I know some of this because there's so much black. Uh, I'm not sure how well this is translating onto the camera due to all the, you know, all the black plastic, everything being black. So I'm not sure how well that's translating for you. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping my lighting and everything is picking it up pretty, pretty well. So see, we got a peg here. We have a peg there. So we can peg that, that sword right into that. Looks really nice. And again, he's still standing perfectly fine. And I don't, you know, it's cool because I, I really don't even have him bent forward to try to displace the weight. Uh, and he's still doing a great job of standing. So uh, the last thing here is we do have uh, kind of his little hunting knife that just pops right into that sheath, very easy. Fits perfectly down in. And then we have his uh, kind of submachine gun here. We'll just throw that in his hand to give him 
a gun to pose with. So there he is. I'm loving this guy, guys. So far, this may be my favorite $20 figure of the year. Um, let me grab uh, just a couple Marvel Legends. We'll do a little bit of size comparison for you guys, and we'll wrap up our video. All right, guys. So got just a couple comparisons for you. So we've got Psylocke from the Marvel Legends, uh, kind of the Jim Lee version there. Um, you can see she's about the same size as, uh, as Snake Eyes is. And then we've got uh, the really hot NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon version uh, over here that uh, everybody's in a big panic and uproar about right now, trying to find that metal head and Casey Jones two pack, including myself. Uh, so I'm with you guys in that pain trying to locate those. But so here's a comparison. I, these three look great together. Uh, you would imagine Psylocke's probably a little on the taller side. Uh, she's kind of that ninja esque uh, type of uh, Marvel legend. So I wanted to pull her in kind of as a comparison. Uh, so. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, review of uh, the G.I. Joe Classified Series Snake Eyes. Uh, leave comments below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Have you found them yet? Have you found them out in the wild? Where are you finding them at? Uh, do you plan on getting them? Are you getting the whole wave? Um, would really enjoy hearing your guys' comments. Hit that thumbs up button uh, and subscribe. The thumbs up really helps me a lot as far as just getting the video out there. Uh, for YouTube to kind of promote it so people can see it. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Until next time.